Hello, this week there are three tasks to be implemented. The first question is when a game is started, a player will be instantiated only when spacebar is pressed, and when player dies, respawning occurs only after hitting spacebar. I guess my game is quite different from others because the previous lecturer's request is to instantiate ships when connecting to server, and I create a create button. So only after the player hits create ship, then the ship is instantiated. Uh, this is a build version from last week, and as you remember, I have a create ship button here. So I guess this time it is quite similar to the task. What I did is to change the create ship button. Uh, this is the script from last week also, and uh, this is the create ship button, and I change the content in this button into input get key down, input get key down with key code space, and um, move the script code uh, the, the code field into the update function so this way the system will detect the button pressed on every frame after it is connected and um, so now um, Let's make a build and try it. I changed the fire button into control. Uh, previously it is space, so I think it has some conflicts. So, oh, there is already one on here, so, yeah, and now I press space, and there is a ship created, and there is no more create ship button here. And that is the first task. The second question is to establish collision check between plasma shots and players only on the server side. When player dies, make an explosion and set game object invisible, but do not destroy it. I understand this as the game object is still active and can fire, but it is invisible. So, quite weird. Um, firstly, I open the plasma script and delete the um, hold function on trigger enter. Let's see from last time's code. Uh, plus my script. Uh, where's plus my script? Mm -hmm. So the plus my script include uh, on trigger enter function, and I delete it. And then I create a server script for server side that will check the collision and drag it into the player's prefab. So now you can see the player prefab has the server script. In the server script code, I want to make sure that the script is only available for server side, so I write it in the function awake that checks the status of the network player. If it is client, then please ignore the script. And I move the function on trigger enter from plasma script into this script so that if the player is server it will do it will do 
actions when there is a collision between plasma shots and the script. And this time the tag is plasma because the uh, game object that has this script is the player. And the specific action here is to send the function dead message to all clients via RPC and then destroy the plasma. So the plasma is destroyed here and I write a dead message out of, the, of this function. So the function dead message is written with RPC talk mark before it so that it can be sent through network and the message is to make explosion by assessing spawn explosion function in the battle script so it is spawn explosion and make the game object invisible this is the part that make it invisible and when I call it as the previous lecture, I call it through network view, RPC, and the message, and send it to all clients. Uh, we can see that the thing contains mesh, mesh renderer that makes it invisible or uninvisible is in the shape fighter one. So we need to specifically address it, address this part to be invisible. I try to make the prefab uh, invisible uh, before, but it doesn't work. So only when I access the the part that contains the mess renderer, then it works. So now when I run the application. Maybe I run it here. So when I run the application and create a shape and then fire, where is the fire button? Oh, I'll change it to control. So it <laughs> quite weird, but you can see that. The send RPC call the dead message to all connected client and because it is invisible so it also can um, shoot itself. If um, we want to make it invisible and inactive, there is a similar code for renderer inactive but I guess it is not necessary here. And that is the second task. Uh, now coming to the third part, dead reckoning. Um, before this week it is totally new for me and the solution here is not completed. And this is what I have so far. I changed the send rate to 1 so that one packet is sent per second and the movement of the player is, is very jacked. Maybe I show the movement of the player. <coughs> this is a build from last week and oh no. forget to build it before the player data script so just imagine that it is very large um, okay maybe I show it in a rotation because I did not success with the rotation part so
So this is the shape and when it rotates So I make a shape here and I move it, you can see that it changed the position very slow. Actually I think before the script it changed even slower and, and even the movement is very bad. But now it is smoother. Last time the movement is just one position and jump. So this task is to make the movement smoother by using interpolation and extrapolation. And the main idea is we send the information about the state of the shape includes position, rotation, velocity, and angular velocity for the corner rotation. When coming to the remote machines, the movement is continued between the two updated time by using velocity and position provided to interpolate next movement. And only when no more data arrives, we will use extrapolation. This is how it is written. There is, there is a struct state build contains the timestamp and other information. The timestamp is to avoid overflow when the application runs for so long time. And then we create an array called buffer state to store 15 states with playback information and a variable to keep track of the use load. And in the on serial lights network view in writing field, uh, there are streaming of position, rotation, velocity, and angular velocity. That's what we will send and in this order. And also when the Remote machines are reading, the same information is read. Um, the buffer state is shifted sideways and the state 15 is deleted. The current state is stored in is recorded in slot 0 and the use slot can also be updated but it won't exceed the buffer size. And then inside the update function, uh, we initialize a, a variable for the target back time. And we go through the buffer and find the correct state to play back. We use a time between two slots to determine if interpolation is necessary. And the R, R at HS here is the state that one slot newer than the best state and the LHS is the best playback state. So RHS S is used when the time difference gets closer to 100 milliseconds and T gets closer to 1 as you see here the inter the back time is 0 0.1 and the extrapolation limit is 500 milliseconds. The vector 3 dot lock, uh, hopefully I, call it, I pronounce it right, linearly interpolates between the best playback state and the state one slot nearer than the playback state by the fraction t and when t equals to zero then returns a position of lhs and when t goes to one uh, returns the position of uh, rs hs 
and the and the quaternion slab uh, spherically interpolates between two states by the fraction of t. We have the extrapolation limit of 50 millimeters milliseconds, and if the extrapolation length exceeds that limit, then we shouldn't use extrapolation. Uh, in this part, we use the velocity provided to create new movement for the ship and then store them. Um, the script is not written by me, I find it on the internet and still trying to understand how the interpolation and extrapolation works, but actually it works quite nice with the uh, straight direction of the ship. But the rotation doesn't get expected result uh, when when this video is cut. Um, after 15 minutes, um, I have a break and I build a version for last lecture, I mean last assignment and try to to make the red like one to demonstrate in in this video so uh, you can see that the movement even straight of rotation is very choppy And I try it with the script version and the transform version. That means this part is transform, and if this part is the last lecture script, it behaves the same. So I think it should be easier to implement that reckoning and to utilize interpolate and extrapolation uh, by script. So it is better to write it into the script so that we can choose which data to serialize and to set to set a playback time or anything else for that and this is the build version after the script is implemented Rotation is still jacky, but when it chooses to move to a straight line, then it is much more smoother. Smoother, you can see. It. So that's it. What I have done this week. And thank you for watching, and see you next week.